A message flashed on Amelia's tablet screen. It was a video message from Ms. Lagrange. Amelia pressed play. I would like to do tomorrow's lesson on Earth if that's okay with you. It could be an excellent opportunity. Let me know, and in the hopes that you are comfortable with that, see you tomorrow with the other kids on Earth. Are you sure, Ms. Lagrange? You know what's happening on my planet currently, don't you? We'll all be wearing our super suits. We'll go on a nature expedition, so it'll be just a surround. No danger at all. Okay. Of course you're all invited. Just so you know. People here aren't used to seeing aliens. The next morning, Ms. Lagrange, Mika, Gil, and Olza crowded through the window and climbed into Amelia's room. Amelia's sister watched in horror as four aliens stood in front of her. Amelia, run. They've come to abduct us. No, sis. These are my classmates. Don't worry about them. Oh, okay then. Well nice costumes. She put her headphones back in and returned her attention to her social media. In the family room, father and mother were chatting over some cereal for breakfast. Amelia cleared her throat. Mom, Dad, I want you to meet my teacher. Ms. Lagrange. And these are my classmates. What are these aliens doing in my house? I'm pretty sure it's fake. Let me inspect. Father grabbed his hand lens and walked around to each of Amelia's classmates and inspected them. I was wrong about that. He shouted and then collapsed. A moment later, Amelia's puppy bit Gil on his finger as he reached to check on Amelia's dad. Dad, are you okay? Amelia asked as she stood over him. He opened his eyes and saw the aliens standing over him. This is a dream come true. He smiled. Aliens in my house. Fantastic. Hello sir. Your daughter is quite a budding scientist. I wanted to meet you in person. I'm still in shock. So proud of my baby. Thanks dad. And now, we are in need of transportation. We would like to go on a field trip. They all crowded into their family minivan and took off on a road trip. I love road trips. Amelia shouted and all the kids buckled in. Now is the time to pick up snacks before the journey. I know just where to go. They stopped at the store and the students all hurried along the aisles looking for treats. What are these? Olza held up a candy bar. Those are delicious. Try it. Gil had a pile of snacks on the counter. And Amelia's father looked down at him. Slow down there son. Isn't this a bit much? Yes, sir. They climbed back into the van. And were off again through plains and deserts until coming to a mountain range with a river. How about this for a field trip? Wow. wow! The students all cried in amazement. Emilia's planet knows how to impress a guest. Yeah, Earth is amazing, Emilia. Amelia felt so proud of her home world. Today we are going to be starting a new unit, physical properties. Physical properties are characteristics of matter that can be observed, measured, and changed. So, if I can see or touch something... It's probably a physical property. Yes indeed. Such as you can see the shape of a mountain and you can touch the rough texture of the rocks. Who can list the five senses? And tell us what body parts help us sense things. Mika raised her hand. Eyes allow us to see. A nose helps us smell. Hands are for touching things. Ears help us hear. And tongues allow us to taste. Well done. We can produce quite a list of physical properties that we gain from simply sensing the world around us. Shape, texture, color, sweetness, sourness, and so much more. Now, what about that second part of the definition? Characteristics of matter that can be measured. You taught us a lot of different things that can be measured. Mass, volume, length, and temperature. Bingo was his Nemo. You got it right. Now, what about that last little part? characteristics of matter that can be changed. The students looked at each other and they shrugged their shoulders. Miss Lagrange smiled. That's okay. I'll give you a hint. The answer is all around us. Olza jumped up and said, I know the answer, Miss Lagrange. Matter. Yes. Well done. Everything that you see around you is made of matter. That means those beautiful mountains are made of matter. Yes. Ms. Lagrange nodded. And those trees? Indeed. The river too. You bet. And what about this stuff? 
Ms. Lagrange pointed to the sky. I know. Gil raised his hand. The air is made of gases. But is that matter? Yes, it is, indeed matter. We'll set up our class here. Ms. Lagrange pulled out a suitcase and opened it. A table appeared with four microscopes on them. The three states of matter are solids, liquids, and gases. That means there are three forms that each kind of matter can take. Take water, for example. It can take the form of solids, liquids and gases. Anyone care to tell me what they are? The solid form of water is called dice, the liquid form is called water, and gas form of water is called vapor. Each type of state of matter has its own characteristics. Solids keep their shape because the atoms in the ice, which are the tiny parts that make up matter, are packed tightly together, so there is nowhere for them to move. We also want to note that solids have definite volume. That means they take up a specific amount of space, and we can measure it. The kids each looked in the microscopes and were amazed to observe the tiny atoms crowded together. Liquids have different characteristics than solids. They do not have a definite shape, but rather they take the shape of the container they are poured in. Yes, Emilia. Amelia had raised her hand. That reminds me of my favorite mug back home. It is shaped like a donut. The class laughed. <laughs> exactly, and so what shape does the liquid take when you pour it in your mug? Donut shape, Ms. Lagrange. However, liquids have a definite volume. That means it is very easy to measure using a beaker or a graduated cylinder. And they take the shape of their container. Why do liquids do that? Ms. Lagrange put new slides in their microscopes and said, Take a look. Amelia watched as the atoms moved around slowly because they had more space to move. I get it, I think. The more space between the atoms, the more room they have to move around. Exactly. That is why water flows. Miss Lagrange said as she pointed to the flowing river. Instead of keeping a definite shape like that solid mountain over there, gases are the most bizarre of them all. They are completely invisible. You wouldn't know they were there at all, if you didn't have to breathe in air and you didn't feel the wind on your face outside. Just then a breeze blew through the classmates and they all cheered. I feel it. There's matter in the wind. Amelia shouted and all the classmates jumped up to catch the breeze. Isn't nature wonderful? Now let's look at these new slides. Ms. Lagrange put new slides in the microscope and the children returned to their investigation of states of matter. Wow, look at how far apart the atoms are. I see it too. Right. Gases have no definite shape and no definite volume. Similar to liquids, they take the shape of their container. Gases spread out until filling the entire space. You can change the state of matter by increasing or decreasing temperature. They made a campfire with dried wood and they sat around it. Ms. Lagrange got a grill and put a pot on the grill. Then she pulled a few ice cubes out of a nice chest and threw them on the pot. As you heat the ice, what happens to it? It melts and becomes liquid water. Yes, exactly. The ice begins to melt when the temperature rises to zero degrees Celsius. We call that the melting point. Look. The liquid water is starting to boil. Does that mean it is beginning to evaporate? Yes, when liquid water is heated to 100 degrees Celsius it will begin to boil and evaporate. We call this the boiling point. You can't see it, of course, but the liquid water is changing to vapor and rising into the air around us. Gil, what do you think will happen to the water vapor when you decrease its temperature? Gil looked thoughtful. If heating a liquid causes it to change to a gas, then wouldn't decreasing the temperature change the gas back into a liquid? Yes, very good inference. And continue to infer, Alzar. What happens when we continue to decrease the temperature of the water? I infer that the liquid water will freeze and turn into ice. Bravo! Ms. Lagrange applauded. I want you guys to teach back. How do states of matter change? Use water as the example. Remember, though, that all matter can change states just like water. Take it away, Maker and Jill. As solid ice gets heated up, the tiny atoms begin to bounce around and spread out. When the temperature reaches zero degrees Celsius, the ice melts and turns into a liquid. Liquid atoms are flowing around, but as the temperature is increased the atoms bounce around even more aggressively and spread out. Once the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, the boiling point, the liquid water begins to boil and turns to water vapor. At this point, 
The atoms are bouncing around at their wildest and fastest pace. Gil said and did a wild dance. Thanks for the demonstration, Jill. Once the temperature decreases, the water vapor condenses and becomes liquid water. The atoms of water slow down and are now moving around more gently. Once more, if you decrease the temperature even more, the atoms begin to slow down and crowd together. At zero degrees Celsius, the freezing point, the liquid water turns into solid ice. Correct. Ms. Lagrange proclaimed. That concludes today's class, but before we go, Amelia, can you teach us how to make s'mores? I'm fascinated. Yes, ma'am. You need a graham cracker, a chocolate bar, and marshmallows. You heat up the marshmallow by putting it on a long stick and holding it over the fire. Careful not to burn it, Gil. Gil's marshmallow caught on fire and burned up. That's okay. Try again. Then you make a sandwich with the three ingredients and enjoy. The class sat around the campfire telling stories and munching on their s'mores.